Hi, and welcome to another episode of our agency podcast. My name is Elizabeth Moore. I'm our foster care and community engagement coordinator. And as you can tell, we're doing a little bit of a different format right now. Um, I think we're all trying to continue to adapt to these times. But I'm also was just telling uh, my guests today that I'm super excited about the opportunities that this opens up to use the Zoom platform for our podcast. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. And um, Jennifer, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Valentine, and I am the director at Marion Adolescent Pregnancy Program. I've been there since 1999, so I'm really showing my age, um, and I've been the director since 2016. Awesome. All right. So can you maybe give a little bit of information, well, or a lot if you'd like, on what, what does Marion Adolescent, what was it again, the two Ps? Pregnancy Program. Pregnancy program. That's what I thought. Like I've known that forever and I'm of course going to stumble on it. What does Marion Adolescent Pregnancy Program do to serve Marion? We actually have many different things that we do within our agency. Um, so I'll just start with one of the first things that we started doing. We've been around for 40 years now. Um, so one of the first things that we started out doing was free pregnancy testing. It started out just being for adolescents, but it is available for anyone who would like one. Um, typically, it's a walk-in, but right now things are a little different, so um, you can call our phone number and make an appointment if you would like a pregnancy test. We'll do that. Um, we have a Changes and Choices program, and that's a program we do in local middle schools and high schools. It's a comprehensive sex education program that we have a curriculum for. Um, however, right now, that's also on a hiatus because of COVID. We're hoping to start um, after the first of the year back in the schools, but right now it's kind of up in the air. So we also have the Help Me Grow program housed in our agency, which is probably the one most people have heard about recently. Um, and within Help Me Grow, there are two different programs, which makes it even more confusing. Um, there's the home visiting program, and that's open to anyone who is pregnant and you can enroll from pregnancy up until your baby is three months old. However, we'll work with the family until the child turns um, three. And that's a home visiting program where we go into homes. However, right now we're not. <laughs> Again, it's all virtual right now. It's Zoom like this or phone calls or texting with families. Um, we do developmental screenings. We do parenting education. We do activities. We have a rewards program for families that are involved where they can earn free things like diapers and wipes and high chairs and vacuums and just all wow. kinds of different things. Awesome. Yeah. And then we have our early intervention program. And that program works with in, um, children from ages birth to three as well. Um, however, you can be enrolled in that program at any age. You don't have to be three months and under. But early intervention works with children who have developmental disabilities or um, delays or medical diagnoses that could maybe they would get a disability or a delay from having that medical condition. Um, so that program, you'd have a service coordinator come into your home. Um, they do an evaluation, which is a little more in depth than our developmental screening. And there's a team and they would um, work with the family on what they feel between the team and the family would best benefit the child as far as services go. So they would then link you with like physical therapy or speech therapy and then transition to preschool if that's what the family wants when the child's ready to turn three. You can be in home visiting and early intervention. So, so that's pretty much what we do in a nutshell. Yeah, very small <laughs> nutshell because I'm sure there's a lot of details that fall into all of those things. That Absolutely. You so. Absolutely. Um, we have a limited number of spots for our home visiting. We have sure. 106 openings right now for families in Marion County. And we have probably like 10 openings right now. So families yeah. are always welcome to come into the program. We could always have a wait list, but typically families age out and new families come in. So it's not usually much of a wait. Pretty natural timing. Yeah. Yeah. So that actually takes me down to um, a question that I had planned on asking later on, but I think it kind of is natural now to ask, like, how do people get to be a part of your services? Um, we get referrals from all different agencies. We get referrals from doctors, from WIC, 
from Children's Services. Um, and people can also self-refer. Okay. They can call our office, um, which the number is 740-387-8336. Um, if nobody's there, they can leave a voicemail on anyone's phone and we will call them back and get their information. Or they can call our central coordination phone number. Okay. I'll give you in a little bit because I don't okay. remember it off the top of my head. <laughs> Down below. <Yeah. laughs> Perfect. But they can always call maps, so that's okay. no problem. Okay, so um, I have a couple of questions about some of the things that you just talked about. So you yeah. talked for a minute about the pregnancy programs. Like, is that a, is, or I'm sorry, the pregnancy test, is that a confidential process? Yes, absolutely. Um, nobody will know you were in to see us, it's all confidential. Um, and at that time we give, if you're positive, we give you a proof of pregnancy. And that way, if you want to apply for Medicaid or WIC, you have that because those are required forms for both those programs. Fantastic. So it already okay. takes out some of those longer steps that yeah. they have to get. Some we usually that. send the girls out with a packet of information with the proof of pregnancy in there, but you know, we'll give you um, some prenatal information to kind of start you out until you get linked up with a OB doctor. Um, right now we have some prenatal vitamins that we can give, the gummy ones, which that's what everybody wants these days. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you the packet, the proof of pregnancy, and some vitamins to get you started. Okay, very cool. Um, and then um, it sounds like, and maybe I'm missing this, but it sounds like you potentially could serve women for basically their entire lives. I, I mean, <laughs> up until a certain point, you know, when we can't be walking in to necessarily get pregnancy tests anymore. But so if you have a pregnancy test, you could also then have that child enrolled in some of those programs. And yes. wow. that's one thing that we talk to um, anybody who comes in that has a positive test. We tell them about Help Me Grow, the benefits of the program. Um, when we were in office, it was great because if they were interested, they could meet their home visitor usually right then and set up that first wow. visit. Um, but yeah, that's a good time to talk to pregnant moms about our program and then the fact they could stay in until their child ages out if they wish. It's all voluntary. Um, so if you start the program and decide you don't have time or it's just not for you, you can always drop out. You're not like signing your life away when you tell us you want to be in the program. Do you happen to have, I know that I've seen some, and I know this is probably just not very fair to ask off the top of your head. Do you have any um, like success stories that you want to share when it comes to some, I'm sure that's one of those questions that you could be like, yes, oh, hundreds of them. <laughs> I do have hundreds of them, but I can think of one really quick. Okay. Um, we've got a mom who's currently in our program. Um, she's been in the program now for probably about three years. She's been in probably about her max time. Um, I believe she's got four little ones at home and she's always been, I don't know, kind of shy, not wanting to speak up for herself and very timid. Um, she is married and recently she decided to start her own business. So now she's gone from being at home all the time, a stay at home mom who wanted to work but really didn't know how she was going to do it. Um, now she has two businesses. Wow. And they're quite successful. Um, I don't want to tell you what they are because sure. it would be confidentiality, yeah. but yeah, she's got two good businesses going here in Marion now. So that's a success story in my eyes. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. So, so what does your role specifically do? And maybe if you want to talk about some of those other roles in the agencies, I know you mentioned home visitor, if you want to talk yeah. about um, We have several different roles in the agency. We've got home visitors and they are all credentialed through the state as a home visitor. They all have at least an associate's degree and they all have um, the education to back up the curriculum that we use, which is parents as teachers. And we have, I always have to stop and count, one, two, five home visitors. And then we have service coordinators, which um, they work with the early intervention program. Um, we have two of those and same thing. They have at least an associate's degree and they're credentialed through the state as well. 
And let me just tell you, the credentialing to be a service coordinator has really gotten difficult. Like, I'm sure it's not an easy process. <laughs> it's like getting a college degree. So I really have to hand it to all those girls because they really, you know, they've gone through a lot to get their credential. Good. Um, we have our nurse on staff who does our pregnancy testing. And during normal time, she goes to like some events at OSUM, Marion Tech, and does some outreach there. And we have our community educator who teaches our classes at the high schools and middle schools. And we have me. <laughs> so, and then one of our service coordinators is also the assistant director, and that's Lori Stidham. Okay, so. super cool. So how does your agency, I know you touched a little briefly on this, but how does your agency fit into the world of child protection? Um, well, there's several ways. Um, one of the main goals of home visiting, and it's spelled right out, is to prevent involvement with child protective services. So that's one of the things we work with families so that, you know, if we're going in there weekly or biweekly, maybe we can give them the support they need to where they may not need the involvement of CPS. So that's one way we work with them. And then we also, we receive referrals from Child Protective Services. So, and those come both for early intervention and home visiting program. Um, the early intervention program gets most of the referrals because that's the state mandate on how it has to work. Um, but once the service coordinators go in, they can usually link those families with home visiting. Very cool. Yeah, I know. Um, so I used to be an intake worker and I know that there are mandates that we have, you know, that if you're in a certain, if you have kids in a certain age range, we have mm -hmm. to that referral. But it did get to a point, you know, so at first when I started, I'm like, well, I have to do this. But then it got to a point where we got to see how beneficial that was for a family and how much they can get from that. And so it wasn't just about meeting any mandates anymore. It was, you know, this is really actually a really good program that, you know, if, if you can. And I actually um, remember now as a former foster parent, I had kids who were involved in the Help Me Grow program. So I remember. <laughs> I totally I came to know. your house. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm like, wait a minute. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're doing phenomenal. So. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. So that's a huge success story. <laughs> yes. They're, they're, I forgot about me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I love the program. I think that it's great. And I, I've seen many Thank families you. who have you know, really the kids have thrived through that. And, and something I didn't know until recently that I've learned in this role is how much you guys work with the board of DD. Yes. Um, the early intervention program, the service coordinators work hand in hand with the um, early intervention specialists or developmental specialists out of DD. So yeah, we work really close with DD. Yeah. I, well, and I figured all of that out. Obviously recently I've learned more but also because I had a friend who had kids on the billboard and everything. And I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't know. And mm -hmm. one of the videos and that's so cool. It's, it really is cool to see how all of our agencies intertwine so much, yes. honestly, just to, to do the best that we can for Mary. And so, well, Jennifer, I know you watch the podcast. I do. And so I know, you know, I normally ask an unscripted question, but I've already asked you a kind of tough one. <laughs> Like to just on the spot come up with a success story. It, like it kind of, I was like, oh, that doesn't seem fair to ask that. But so I won't, I won't make you do that again. But do you have anything else that you would like to share with the community? Um, just, I love our programs. All of our employees love what we do. Um, so we are always excited to work with a new family. So please, if you know anybody, tell them about us. Once we get families enrolled, our retention rate is really high. Oh yeah, I believe. So, you know, sometimes people are a little leery about somebody coming into your home, but we are not there to judge. We're just there to support families and help them through any challenges they might have, refer them to other agencies and just be there for the family, so. Well, yeah. and something I think that speaks volumes about probably your leadership, but also the program and the way that you know, it works in the communities. The few people that I personally know who have been there, like working, have worked there for a long time. 
Yeah. yeah, we don't have a high turnover rate at all. <laughs> certainly keep people. And that says a lot because it is hard to go into people's homes. Mm -hmm. so that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. And as always, if you have any questions or any agencies that you would like to see highlighted on this podcast, please let me know and I'll put my information down below so you can easily find that. It'll also be in the about section of this podcast episode. And if you um, need services with Help Me Grow, please feel free to reach out to them and we'll have their information also in that section. And as always, have a great day. Thank you.